Today's lesson is called Graphing Linear Equations in Standard Form. So first, let's discuss what standard form is. We saw this in the beginning of the chapter, and now we're coming back to it. So standard form are linear equations that are written in the form ax plus by equals c. Keeping in mind that the a, b, and c are numbers or constants. So we're going to put that underneath. a, b, and c are constants, which remember, constants is another way to say numbers, something without a variable. When we're working with equations in standard form, we also end up working with x and y intercepts. So the point at which the line intersects the x-axis, so if you intersect the x-axis, you are called the x-intercept. So if we go over here and look at the graph, we're going to locate the point where it's crossing the x-axis, which is right here. That is your x-intercept. Next, the point at which the line intersects the y-axis is called the y-intercept. So if I look at the graph where it's crossing the y-axis right here is the y-intercept. Now for our example underneath, it says identify the x and y-intercept of the graph shown to the right. We've located them, but now we want to identify them and name their coordinate. So for the x-intercept, where we cross the x-axis, that coordinate is 8, 0. Anytime you are on the x-axis anywhere, your y value is always going to be a 0. If we look at the y-intercept, I look up where it's located. The x value is 0. The y value is 8. So that's 0, 8. And again, anytime you're on the y-axis, your x value is always going to be a zero. So knowing that helps us figure out the intercepts from an equation written in standard form. So what we're going to discuss next is finding intercepts algebraically. To find the x-intercept of an equation, keep in mind we said above that if you're on the x-axis, your y value is always a zero. So when we're trying to find the x-intercept, we are going to replace y with zero and solve for x. So x-intercept, you actually end up replacing y. So when it comes time to actually find the y-intercept, Remember, on the y-axis, your x value is always a 0. So here, you will replace x with 0 and solve for y. So y-intercept, you actually replace x with 0. So we're going to use the equation 2x plus 3y equals 9 to demonstrate how to do this. So we'll start with the x-intercept, which, remember, means that y has a value of 0. In the equation, I will replace my y with a 0. Then we will start simplifying and solving. So this is 2x plus 3 times 0 is just going to be 0, so it's gone. So this is just 2x equals 9. In order to get x by itself, I would have to divide both sides by 2. So x equals 4 and a half. So that means the coordinate of my x-intercept is 4.5. And if you remember, we plugged in y equals 0, so 4 and a half, 0. Now, we will find on the other side the y-intercept. So remember, if it's the y-intercept, your x value is a 0. So we'll replace the x with 0 this time. 2 times 0 is 0, so it's going to disappear, and we just have 3y equals 9. 
In order to get y by itself, we would have to divide both sides by 3. So y equals 3. So that means my coordinate here is 0 for x, that's what we plugged in, and a 3 for y. So we have found the intercepts for this standard form equation algebraically. Now, to take it a step further, we can actually use this as a method of graphing. If I can find the intercepts algebraically like we just did, I can now graph by using those intercepts. So it says we can now graph the linear equation using the intercepts that we just found. So my x-intercept was at 4 and a half, 0. So that's here. My y-intercept was at 0, 3. That's here. And then I can take my straight edge or ruler and connect these arrows on the ends to show that there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. And the original equation 2x plus 3y equals 9 goes on the line. So being able to find the intercepts algebraically has now turned into an option for you as a method for graphing. So now that we know that, let's graph a new equation from beginning to end using the whole entire process. So graph the equation negative 3x plus 8y equals 24 using intercepts. So a couple of things I notice. The equation is in standard form. The variables are together. That's how I know that intercepts or intercept method is what would work best for this equation. We also previously learned slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and that would be the best method to write down the slope and the y-intercept and graph using that option. So when you see an equation in standard form, you can use intercepts to graph it. So we have to find the x-intercept and also the y-intercept. So we'll start with the x-intercept, which remembers y equals 0. In the equation, negative 3x plus 8y equals 24, I'm going to replace y with 0. So negative 3x plus 8 times 0 equals 24. So I get negative 3x. When I do 8 times 0, it's 0, so it's gone. So I get negative 3x just equals 24. To get x by itself, we have to divide by the coefficient, which is negative 3. So I get x equals negative 8, which means my coordinate is x value of negative 8. And if you remember, to find the x-intercept, we replaced y with 0, so my y value is a 0. So then we can go over to the graph and graph negative 8, 0. Then we will go and find the y-intercept, which means we're plugging in x equals 0. So my equation is negative 3, I'm replacing x with 0, plus 8y equals 24. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, it's gone. So I end up with 8y equals 24. In order to get y by itself, I must divide by the coefficient, which is an 8. So y equals 3. So I, now I know my y-intercept had an x value of 0, that's what we plugged in. And I just found the y value is 3. So I then go over to the graph and plot 0, 3. And now I take my straight edge or ruler and connect my points, arrows on the end to show that there are infinitely many solutions. And then I label my line with the original standard form equation. So in order to have this method count as a way of graphing, you have to show algebraically finding the two intercepts. Then all you have to do is plot those two points, connect, arrows, label, and you have fully graphed with all points everything efficiently. So underneath it says graphing using intercepts is an efficient way of graphing linear equations that are in standard form. So now let's go back and compare the methods that we've learned about. It says Graphing using the slope and y-intercept is the most efficient way of graphing linear equations that are in sloped-intercept form. So now we know that if it's in standard form, we can use intercept method. If it's in slope-intercept form, we want to write down the m and the b. We have learned 
that you can take standard form equations and change them into y equals mx plus b equations, and obviously that is still an option. But for our next activity, I want us to get used to recognizing what it looks like and pick our method of graphing based on the way it was given to us. So for our closure, I would like you to draw a box around the linear equation if graphing using intercepts is the best method, okay? So you are going to put a box around any equation where you think intercepts method is the best. You are going to draw a circle around the linear equation if graphing using the slope and y-intercept is the best method. Now going back up for just a second, if we're graphing using intercepts, remember standard form is what we're looking for. So that's ax plus by equals c. And graphing using the slope intercept form, remember slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So just wanting to remind you of that before you go to your activity. So now what I would like you to do is pause the video, complete the closure activity, and then resume the video to go over the answers. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try the closing activity, here are the results. Remember, intercept method is best for standard form equations. So I put a box around all of the equations where the x's and the y's were on the same side together, therefore in standard form. A circle was supposed to go around any equation where writing down the slope and the y-intercept is the best method. It has to be in slope-intercept form or y equals mx plus b form to quickly identify the slope and y-intercept. So you want to circle all of the equations where y is isolated or by itself. Then you can easily pick out the number in front of x as your slope and the number without a variable as your y-intercept. And that concludes your lesson on graphing linear equations in standard form.